Yeah, hi there. It's been a while since we looked into the controller API of Bitwig and the API version 10 is out for some time. It's available in Bitwig Studio 3.1. You know, now sometime also the API version is numbered differently from the Bitwig version. API version 10 brings a lot of new stuff. I think it's the biggest extension since version 1 of Bitwig and in this this video I uh, will give you an overview and we will also do a little bit of coding looking into the new note repeat aka arpeggiator feature and also the note latch so what is in the box of this new version as I said it's a really really big update and the biggest part is this new hardware API support up till now if you watch my previous videos you learned how you receive MIDI and then execute a command and Bitwig does not really know how your hardware looks how many knobs you have and faders and with that knowledge you can support more stuff or give the user also more features and that's the idea behind the hardware api also it is faster than the current implementation because it can run in the audio process but for that we will need some separate episodes and i think this needs also more than one episode to look into because it's just really a massive new new API and need some explanation. So there's also note repeat which a lot of people have been waiting for and it's not simply repeating a note it's a full blown arpeggiator very powerful and we will look into that. Note latch is a little feature I think and I did not really find the use case for that to be honest it's you can yeah you can latch a note which means you press a note it keeps playing even if you release the key. We will also look into that and then another thing people have been waiting for is you can now edit the notes. You still cannot change the start of the note because it's still fixed to the grid but all other parameters which are also editable in Bitwig are available now. And there are some helpful new methods. I think we can look into that straight away. So you get all the reference as usual here in the Bitwig controller API which can be reached from Bitwig. If you forgot about that you can go here to the help section to the documentation. If you scroll down to the bottom there is a control API reference and this will open here the browser for you and you can browse all that and there is a one here entry called history and there you find all the different version numbers and the history which functions were added or deprecated and if you open up here API 10 you see there's a lot of stuff added to that and let's look into some single stuff which I wrote down here so delete methods so we can now delete more object types and for that Bitwig introduced here this deletable object and every other class which implements that interface can be deleted now if you look here you see what is new we can now finally delete a channel as well and we can also delete devices which was not possible before what was possible before which can also be de deleted via that new unified command is the scenes clips drum pads and all these things you see here are ready to be deleted so let's browse with that a bit there is a here the application you might wonder about all these actions that were added they are also necessary for the hardware api so you can ignore that for a bit and here is now also the record quantization added here so you can also control that from your device and we have several new solo and mute function for example in project which allows you to control multiple mutes or solos at one uh, let's go here to the project there it is you see for example you can unarm all or as well or unmute all channels unsolo all channels and stuff like that so some nice helper functions and also the properties to get the state of that information might come in handy we can also control qmix control this is here somewhere in the transport no not in transport yeah here it's it's in a project so you can control also the qmix the q volume and these might also be handy these are the functions here in in Bitwig if you look at that you can go here to the studio tab and these are the two parameters you can control now as well with these functions. What are requirements if you want to develop for API 10? If you're doing Java you need now the JDK 
12 to compile your application because this is required by the jar you need to include for Bitwig. That's a bit of an odd choice because 12 is not a long-term ported release and meanwhile there is already JDK 14 in the, this regular thing. So you should definitely check if you watch that video at a later time what the current required version is and I will definitely also notify you about that if that changes and you can again download from adopt open JDK that's the version I'm using you can still download 12 it's hidden already so if you go here to the download page you see it's 8 11 and 14 is already the latest here but you can go here to other platforms and still download also version 12 you need to update your maven pom file to use now api 10 instead of the whatever version you used before and if you do javascript there is this load api function which needs also be pumped up to version 10 and also maybe an information you did not get is Bitwig has now also an open source repository where they implement some extensions as well and they are also implemented in Java now so this is also a nice source to get examples especially for the new hardware API. Okay lots of slides so far let's do something real some real coding. The code I show is again checked in here on github in this Bitwig controller API tutorials repository where you can already download all the previous example and also now this new Apache node ledge example is in there as well. So the node input has two new functions where you can get this Apache object and this ledge object. And again, let's look here into the API and also remember you can search here, which makes this also a bit faster there you see you get the apache object straight away and this is pretty straightforward we will look into these objects later on so these are the different parameters you can change on the apache object so let's have a little look into the example source code as i said already we need to go with version 10 that's the usual defined controller and i defined i want to have one midi input we don't need an output for this example just an input and for Experimentation, we have these two global variables, one for the Apache object and one for the node ledge. And also the init function is no big secret here. We first get the MIDI input. I wrote here about that in a comment, what is a real Java object? So we can look that up in the documentation as well. And there is a node input we create, just call it Apache test. And we create finally our Apache object and our node ledge object. And we just want to print out here for this property is enabled so this gives us a state if the Apache is on or off and this will print out that information and remember what I explained in previous tutorials if you want to print something you either need to add a value observer or you need to call the mark interested function and then use the getup. Same we do here for the node latch if that is enabled and that's basically it and I added two functions which we can manually call then uh, which which toggles the on off state of the latch and of the arpeggiator. So let's try that out here. Let's go into Bitwig and I added this little script here in the settings and I chose my Cork M3 as the input. So let's look here at the Apache output here in the controller script console and there you see Apache is initialized and Apache is off and also the node ledge is off and I just loaded here a little sound from the polygrid let's hear that so it plays a kind of a bass sound and if we now simply call our toggle function which I have here let's say I'll toggle Apache copy that into the console I showed you the strict before that you can use that to experiment if you have just global JavaScript function here we go it's on so it has changed its state and let's try that out <laughs> So you hear the arpeggiator is working and sounding. Turn it off again, so it's off now. Okay, and let's do the same for the note latch. Uh, same for the note latch, so toggle here, note latch. Let's go there. And I press the key and release it. And it keeps sounding. And even if I press it again, 
it still keeps sounding so we need to call the function again to turn it off so this means it's not as you normally have that maybe in some samplers if you press it again it automatically stops so that's not the case so if you want to implement such a feature you need to do that yourself i don't want to show much more in the code because it's pretty straightforward so now you can simply look here in apache at a note ledge interfaces and it's basically very straightforward you have the different property types and especially if you look in Apache that these are the exact parameters you also have in a real Apache device so if we at that here apatriator you will see it's the same stuff you get here in the feature list so let's check out so first thing is the mode you can control this is the drop down so you can change here between going up down up down and the random the usual stuff you can set the octave range of the apatriator and uh, the octave can be set here as well so you have the rate which can be set here you can shuffle it the shuffle uh, might be interesting to note it's the same as the global object for shuffling so that's uh, yeah it's in the groove and this is the shuffle here object which is controlled by that one you can decide to use pressure to velocity which is nice if your device ports poly aftertouch or simple aftertouch you can then support that the pressure intensity the velocity changes while playing the arpeggiator so what you would normally do with a controller is put some of this stuff in the menu or on buttons and then turn them on and off or set the different values so pretty straightforward same is there for the note latch object so not that very sophisticated and i think you understand that pretty easy Okay, so much for this first introduction video and the first look at the little extension for Apatriator and Note Latch. And in the next one, we will dive into this pretty complex hardware API. And until then, write some funky code.